passenger aviation first started to take off almost a hundred years ago, pretty much all airplanes were tail draggers, just like this DC-3. Makes sense, we have these huge props right here that probably would very easily uh, hit the ground in a normal gear configuration. Normal gear configuration. That hasn't worked. But I mean, we can talk about countless of airplanes that had a landing gear set up like this. So the question arises, well, why aren't modern airliners equipped with tail dragger landing gear set up? These are called tricycle landing gear. Well, the answer is actually quite simple, but let's talk about that later. And first of all, build our own tail dragger airliner. Right, we're going to use maybe the 737. That's like your most conventional airliner. And you can already see, well, some design changes that we have to do here if you compare these airplanes. Here we have the center of gravity that's shown. Where there is the main difference. In order for a tail dragger to stay a tail dragger and not be a front dragger that has a tail landing gear like this, the center of gravity must be behind the wheels. As you can see, that is the thing. And that's why the airplane, you know, normally at least flips directly onto the tail landing gear. The 737, we can definitely see that the center of gravity is in front of the wheels, which makes, you know, the airplane drop the nose down and not the tail. You can see what happens if you don't obey that law with some cargo airplanes that have been loaded very tail heavy. In order to shift that center of gravity back, we can make the tail section of the aircraft a little bit longer. There we go. This is what I like to see. This is a bit longer now and we'll definitely be able to put the weight and balance of the airplane behind, just slightly behind the landing gear. That's what I'm Perfect. I'm now working um, on the nose landing gear that obviously isn't supposed to come down here, but it's supposed to come down there. All right then, now after a long time here, I've now created, here we go, you can see it, a tail landing gear door. It's practically moved from the front of the airplane to the back of the airplane. And we're now finally able to assemble it and make it work now that we've done the texturing. All right, now look at this very long airplane. Everything's fine. Let's go ahead and move the nose landing gear. That is the most simplistic step right here, like that. Perfect, I think that already looks, uh, looks actually, mm, we might have to move some weight here in the back in order to actually make this difference in weight and balance. All right, now as always, I'm now gonna adjust the physics model that actually works, you know. All right, there we go. Look at the physics model. Now nice and long in the back. Oh man, yeah. Problem is really that we need to have more weight in the back. So we're gonna put more passengers in the back. I guess the nose is gonna be a lot lighter now because it doesn't have that big nose landing gear. And yes, we do have a weight and balance that is slightly behind the landing gear, main landing gear. So I, I guess this could work. Oh, well, and yes! <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. We have a tail dragger 737 and it stands in all its beauty. It, it genuinely, it, there, take a look at that confidence. A tail dragger seven, I didn't actually expect this to work. Let me see if this actually steers. I haven't done any changes here. Oh yeah. We just, um, it's a bit tempting. <laughs> Well, this nose to touch down. This is not going to go well. Yeah, the 737 is just way too low to the ground. But hey, actually, this is not as bad as I expected. Yes, as we saw on the DC-3, that one had like a really big angle uh, standing up, you know. This one is so flat to the ground that it's ridiculous. Uh, let's go ahead and actually try to rotate. This is a bit different now in a tail dragger configuration. So we have to kind of... Try to pull up. Come on, try to pull up. Takeoff sucks a bit more, actually. Just get off, you idiot. That was not a good tail dragger takeoff. Perfect, everybody. We have now done this. We can put the landing gears up. Come on, does that work? The animation? <laughs> everybody, I'm a genius. This has been beautifully created. The hours of work have been worth it. Uh, or something. And there you go. This is now back to a normal 737. No worries at all. Now, I mean, here we can already see well, it just doesn't make much sense for an airliner that is low to the ground like this to have a tail dragger configuration. As I already told you, tail draggers had to be tail draggers because of those huge propellers that would otherwise hit the ground. But, but here we have jet engines anyway. These engines are so much smaller than props. I would like to actually try landing this thing. That's actually very funny. All right. Now, it is quite different to land a tail dragger. Some people say it is a bit harder, especially in crosswind, because there's an effect called the ground lube effect, which is why actually tail draggers kind of kind of suck. 
Let's try to land. It's going to be quite a bit weird and a bit strange feeling because you have to land on the main landing gear first and not on the nose landing gear as before, you know? That mostly makes for harder landings. We can do that now. Perfect. Because you have to land on the main landing gear first. Perfect. Like that, I think. Oh! No, 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 that wasn't supposed to happen. But it can happen really quick. Uh, that's fine. That's all right. Yeah. The problem is these jet airplanes are so much faster than propeller planes like the DC-3. And they have to stop quicker than the DC-3, right? Because they're so fast. So that's going to definitely cause you to hit the nose. Jeez, I guess something we could do is, you know, changing the height of the tail landing gear. Maybe like that. Yeah, that is slightly, that is slightly better. I guess this works a little bit better. Well, well, well you know, what fascinates me most is how well taxiing works, actually. You don't want to break too much, though. <laughs> yes. Oh! No, 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 passengers. Uh, welcome aboard Swiss Air One Airlines. We have the best innovation here. That's just a very tortured landing gear actually as well. Um, let's maybe try to take off once again. I think this now would work. Now, or I guess the best step we could do is actually put those things down here, the main landing gear. So we actually have what we know of Intel draggers. Dear Lord, please forgive me. I've now resized the landing gear, made it, you know, quite large that it's kind of impossible to put it into the body anymore. Yes, that's another problem, especially with the 737. You wouldn't be able to fit such a long landing gear, I guess, in the fuselage for such a big plane. But here we go. We finally have the angle that is needed in order to simulate this properly. And we can already see some of the problems of the tail dragger. The taxi visibility is very bad, which is a problem. As you can see here, this is tail dragger, which is completely chopped off of our, under the airplane tax visibility, everybody. All right, and this is where we come to another issue of having such a high-powered airplane that is pitched up like this on the runway. This is gonna tear the runway apart. Oh, I think I should maybe change the weight and balance here. All right, yes, there we go. We are flying stably now. We can put the landing gear up, which is gonna look absolutely stupid. Everybody, there we go. We have a tail dragger that actually is able to fly somewhat. We might wanna fly it then to short runway. I mean, what are tail drag planes made for? They're made for flying to rugged terrain, to short runways, badly prepared runways as well. Let me go ahead and see if this works then. All right, it's gonna be a hard landing. There we go, that's the way to stop. And we probably will drop right down to our tail landing gear once again, once we're done. I mean, I haven't even talked about half of the issues that tail landing gears come along with. I mean, just think about, you know, the boarding process of the plane. You must climb up to the airplane to go in front. Cargo loading would be definitely horrible with a plane that isn't level. There's just so many things that don't make sense. And this is why you don't have any tail draggers anymore. All right, that's been a tail dragger landing have to be careful not to stop quickly because if we put on the brakes oh right that was very close there we go that's been able to do it uh, very carefully stopping just like in a tail dragger we've done a first landing but was it worth it is it worth the pain no but so thank you guys so so much for watching this absolutely stupid video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night and a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.